Hey guys, it's awesome to be back with you. I want to talk about a little message called hope. So for a lot of us, hope is a common word used around today. We hear it um, a lot in our conversations like, I hope that person will win the competition or I hope I'll be able to feel better today. We see it on billboards and um, foundations. It's everywhere. And today I don't want to just talk about surface level hope. I want to talk about a deeper and different kind of hope the hope that we have in Jesus. Hope in the Bible is a confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength in his faithfulness. So from a young age, I quickly discovered that there's this Jesus that loves me and wants to get to know me and that I can have a relationship with him. So I went on that journey and things were great. But as I entered into high school and as I got older, the whole level of trust and hoping in him definitely wavered and I struggled. Because, you know, as you get older, you face things in life that you weren't expecting. You're going to hit challenges that you weren't prepared for. And things happen. And where is God all in that? The best way I can describe my hope journey is kind of like a compass. I'd gone down roads that sort of led me off track. I got stuck and sort of lost my way. It was a matter of always finding my way back to the path. To the path of life, to the path that was leading me somewhere purposeful and meaningful, that um, screamed Jesus, <laughs> um, that got me back to the point. Finding my why is so important and when I find my why, I get back to the point of things and then Jesus, we're off, we're, we're, we're conquering the world together. While there are many times, in all honesty, I wanted to give up, God never gave up on me. And no matter how far I ran, how many times I cried or tried to hide from everyone, God was just waiting with open arms, just waiting for me to come back to Him. And I can say confidently to this day that I have a hope that never leaves me. That even in those dark times in high school or growing up and living with stress, in stressful family situations, like I can always say that, yeah, actually God, you're always there with me. You're always by my side and you're amazing. And I'll talk a little bit about how good God is a little bit in a sec. But 1 Peter 3 says this, Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. How good is that? This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. The fact of the matter is, we are all searching for a hope that will never perish, spoil or fade. We are looking for something that is going to last. And thankfully, that lasting hope is found in Jesus, whether you know it or you don't yet. <laughs> But if I could go back to my 17 or 18 year old self, I would tell her that the stuff that you're going through doesn't compare to the good things that are coming. That your suffering is there also to help build your character and to grow you and to make you the person that you are meant to become. And I fully and wholeheartedly believe that because I know that so many of my times where I thought, I just can't see through this or it does not make sense or why are you punishing me God? Like in reality, it was a lesson that taught me and changed me, shaped my character and though maybe outwardly some of the circumstances didn't change, I changed and that gives me great hope knowing that actually these things that come, you know, to us in this world aren't meant to just crush us and hurt us, we, we are made to fight it because we have a hope in Jesus that is that he's already won the battle, that he has already overcome the world, so we can have that hope that no matter what we face, we can overcome it as well. So my question today for all of us is, what is our hope in today? Because God is so freely given, we so freely have a choice to receive this hope. But we can't have it both ways. We can't have our hope in the world and in God. It's got to be one or the other. But thankfully our God is so good and so gracious and his hope is always there even when we get off track, even when we decide actually I'm kind of liking this kind of life. But my prayer is much deeper than just 
that grace that he has. My prayer is that we would live wholeheartedly in his hope, anchored, rooted deep down in our hearts, no matter where we go in this life, we carry that hope with us. And in Ephesians 1 verse 18 it says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance and his holy people. Today you might be walking away from the hope that God has placed in you. Today you might be lost and feeling hopeless. Today you may know the hope but aren't acting out on it and shining your light in it. We must be aware that there is an enemy that wants to ruin our assurance and our hope in God. There's an enemy that wants to cause us doubt and question our whole reason for why we live in the first place, the whole point of why we give our hearts to God in the first place. There's, a, there's an enemy that wants to destroy that hope, that wants to weaken it and will do anything to water it down. The great news is that no matter what the enemy tries to do, God has already won the victory and that we can have assurance that God's hope will never waver, will never, never get watered down, will never dwindle, it will always be there. So we can have that assurance that this hope is something we can stand on and the enemy ain't got nothing on us. You are not too far away from God. You are not so lost that you can't be found. You are not so damaged that you can't be healed and made whole. God has got something greater for you in store. It doesn't matter what road you've down, gone down. It doesn't matter how far off the track you feel you are. It's God. He is able to do the impossible. He is able to restore and he is able to heal and he is able to bring that hope again into your hearts. And this is the truth we should be standing on, that God is good, that he has good plans. It says in Jeremiah 29 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So for some, I feel this message is timely, as God is asking you to trust him again. What others may have said of you, or what situation broke you, this doesn't reflect God's heart. While I don't have all the answers for why bad things happen, know that you are not alone in this fight. I know that God hasn't finished with you yet. He's going to use what you've gone through to be a blessing and help to those around you. The last thing I want to say is maybe you do know of this hope. Can I encourage you, don't underestimate the hope that is in you. Make sure you seek out Jesus every day. Keep it in you alive and well and burning like a fire. It says in 1 Peter 3 verse 15, But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. People are looking for a hope and just want to encourage you that you have a great hope to share and your story matters and I just hope that you feel encouraged today and know that you are loved and know that Jesus loves you and yeah, be blessed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!